Hey guys, I'm Lee from Lee Likes Music, the place to share, explore and learn about rock music from Bandcamp. And in today's video, we're going to take a look at another Todd Rundgren album. I'm kind of doing a series of this guy by now. Uh, but anyways, today we're going to take a look at an album by him, which is called Hermit of Mink Hollow. So that's coming up. So before we get into the actual album review, I want to talk a little bit about the background story of the album. So when Todd Rengren was recording and producing this album, he actually went through a divorce. So he was in this very emotional period where he was going back to his roots, stylistically speaking. He was creating music that was more similar to his uh, some of his previous albums, such as Something Anything and runt he was creating more ballads more pop rock type of music he still has like on something anything an element of experimentation he is still that frank Zappa of pop music type but uh, but yeah, he's, he's going back to his roots nonetheless. You can see another example of him going back to his roots when it came to the touring of this album as well. Instead of putting out a tour where he and his backing band was touring simply with the album, he was actually putting together a retrospective mini tour accompanied by many of the musicians that he had played with over the past 13 years. So he was going back in time. He was feeling maybe a bit nostalgic and he wanted to get back to where he was before because he felt a bit lost maybe because of this divorce. Now, the name of the album, Mink Hollow, actually refers to a valley or the road that goes through a valley. And uh, it's actually a place that you'll find if you go to Lake Hill, New York. And Rengren actually recorded this album while living in this place, while living on Mink Hollow Road. And according to him, he declared himself a studio hermit because he was, uh, he was very closed off. He spent a lot of time in studio. And um, he had previously said that he had been a bit too social and he needed to close himself off in order to get into this creative process in the studio. All right, so with that in mind, let's get into the review. So I wanna talk a little bit about the songs that stood the most out to me, uh, first of all, as I always do. So the first song that I wanna mention is Can We Still Be Friends, the second track. This one, as so many of the other songs here, sounds like a classical pop rock ballad. You have the piano and the vocals driving the melody forward. There's a lengthy instrumental off to chorus that you'll find in the song that is not very typical of the genre. Again, as I mentioned before, no matter where you're looking, there's always a sense of experimentation in Todd Rundgren's music, and that's something that you'll find here. It's something that he even pointed out himself, that this was something that he was proud of in this song, this uh, after chorus that he made, because it, it was not something that was very typical. Now, when it comes to the lyrics, the lyrical theme, it's about a breakup, and it's about the main person, the guy telling the... <laughs> The narrative, possibly Todd Rundgren, he asks the other person, can we still be friends? A lot of people think that this is a message from Todd Rundgren to his wife. It might be so. But in interviews, Todd Rundgren has actually said that there was no direct message. He has never confirmed that this was a message to his wife. According to him, he was never really that... Uh, aware of what he was writing. He was more aware of the harmony between the melodies and the lyricism. For him, both of those parts fit well together and maybe he just intuitively came up with the lyricism at that time. Maybe it is subconsciously connected to his wife. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm just, uh, yeah, coming up with random ideas here. Now jumping over to the fifth track, we have Onomatopoeia. I think that is the name at least. Uh, Rengren is famous for creating these very goofy uh, tongue-in-cheek songs with tongue-in-cheek lyricism where he basically doesn't take anything seriously. He is kind of letting his creativity take the lead. And um, and yeah, it's, it's basically a lot more type of a lowbrow song and I really love that. It's a very fast-pacing song about having a writer's block. 
and uh, several times through the song, uh, Todd Rundgren sings, I have a feeling somewhere I can't describe, a sound in my head that I can't describe. And not only does it seem like he had troubles coming up with lyrics for a song, he also had trouble coming up with sounds. So throughout the whole track, during the quote-unquote chorus, I don't know if you can even call it that, he introduces us to all of these random sounds that is just flowing through his mind, like it's in a stream of consciousness way. A sound in my head that I can't describe, it's sort of whack, whir, wheeze, whine, sputter, flat, squirt, scrape, clink, clank, clunk, clatter. It's one of the shortest songs on the album. I think it's one minute and 35 seconds long, but it's one of the most uplifting, positive, and just playful songs you can find here. And, and that is the reason why I loved it so much. Uh, it is so, it is such a just juxtaposition to all the other tracks that are very serious. They are about love and about sadness. And suddenly this random freak show of a song comes out and it's just like, whoa, <laughs> this, this just happened. It has this oompa rhythm going on. It almost reminds me of something that you can find in a video game or some type of circus or something. I don't know. Now the next track that I want to mention is the sixth one. It's called Determination. This song is following up on this positive mood that we got from the previous song, Onomatopoeia, but it has a more serious tone to it. One thing that I really liked about the song is how the guitar plays this very eerie, finger-picked melody that climbs up and down the, the scale. Perfect for the song. For some reason, I feel like this song is long, although it's just three minutes long. I think it's because of the amount of repetition going on here. There's a lot of verses, a lot of choruses over and over. His vocals, the melody, everything is so catchy and it's easy to it's easy to grasp onto the song. From what I understand from reading the lyrics, the message here is not that complicated. It's about this girl, possibly, who's going through a tough time. And Rundgren is cheering on this girl and um, uplifting her and kind of introducing her to a more positive mindset where he, uh, he says, hey, show me some determination, be strong, be proud of yourself. That is what I wanna see. So it's, yeah, a very uplifting song that really gets you in the mood, a very positive song. So this album was divided into two parts. Imagine an LP, it has two different sides. On the first side, on side A, the record label wanted to have the most appealing songs, so the most poppy and easygoing songs, so to speak. Flip side of the record, you had the challenging side. And these are actually some of the songs that have more deeper lyricism to them. So maybe you need to take more time to actually get into them. I actually found that to be true. But with some of the songs, I. I just found it easily to to get into because they were more interesting, they have more depth to them. And I sort of like those tracks. I, I like tracks that tell a story. Track number eight, for example, is a great example of this. Uh, it's a, a story, it's a story. It's a song that tells this very sad and tragic story of a homeless lady, which is referred to as the bag lady. Very early in the song, Rundgren compares this bag lady to a fly that is battering itself to a, um, what is it called? Window. Window. He compares the lady to a fly that is battering itself endlessly to a window. Although the woman is obviously not doing that, but she is following somewhat that same motion. She's walking up and down the streets of uh, West Side Broadway. Rundgren also contemplates where these poor people are coming from because they seem to come out of nowhere. No one really cares to actually go and talk to them and uh, learn about their stories. So it's almost as if they fell from the sky or climbed up from the sewers or something. Although he knows that this is not true, but he just says it in in an ironic manner to show the ignorance and the acceptance of 
the fact that we have this social injustice. Uh, where am I? Where am I? Uh, <laughs> uh, here we go. I found it. I found it. Now, this song was written in the 70s, but I don't think that the reality that Rundgren is describing here has changed since that time. Uh, certainly hasn't changed much. I can read you some of the lyrics here. There is no yesterday. There is no tomorrow. There's only now and that hardly matters. No one cares about sad old ladies with bags full of tatters. Yeah, again, very sad and um, heartfelt song that just prompts what is going on in our reality. At 153, there's this morning saxophone solo that fades in. It's very short, but it just adds a bit of versatility to the song and kind of spices it up a bit. I just love it when he puts in these small details. It's amazing. So yeah, those were the songs that stood out to me. To sum up, I want to say that this album, Hermit of Mink Hollow, is... It's a, it's a mixed bag to me. It's very mixed, you know, you have these very positive songs, very uplifting songs, but you also have some sad songs. And the sad ones, I don't know if there are more sad songs than positive songs, but those seem to take up the most space. All the Children Sing, Onomatopoeia, uh, Determination, Out of Control, these are very driving, positive, uplifting songs, but then you have Can We Still Be Friends, Hurting For You, um, Too Far Gone, Bag Lady, and uh, these are very sad, very depressive in a, in a way. To be honest, I cared more for the positive and more uplifting songs than what I did for the other ones. The second thing that I want to mention about the album, just to sum it up, are these unconventional details that he's using. You can find one example of this on Fade Away. It's the last track. The sneer here is drowned in this reverb effect. And uh, you also hear that the hi-hat, it is kind of looped around so that it's played backwards. And uh, yeah, it just adds up for this very weird drum loop. This is something that other artists are also famous for doing. The Beatles did it a lot, but I just really love how he puts a little bit of detail. He wants to create something that is a bit different, and that is something I've always loved about Rundgren's music. Another track where you have these random unconventional details is Onomatopoeia, but then again, what is what is conventional about the song? Tell me. On Too Far Gone, you have this pseudo samba rhythm or per percussion going on. Yeah, again, really weird, but it's it's cool that he blends in these uh, these inspirations. I had a really hard time getting into this album, guys. Um, I loved some of the songs here. I didn't care that much for some of the other songs, but I would still say that this is a positive listening ex experience. Not the best Todd Rundgren album that I've experienced, that I've listened to so far. Go and check it out if you want to. I'm gonna give Hermit of Mink Hollow a six out of 10. Please don't be angry at me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're all entitled to our own opinion, so it doesn't really matter if you hate me or not. Um, thank you so much for watching, guys. If you like to share, explore, and learn more about rock music from Bandcamp, then I highly suggest you click the red subscribe button below and click that bell icon beside the subscribe button because in that way you'll always get notified when I upload new videos. To this beautiful place right here. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you later. Stay tuned. Bye.